So there are a couple other things I want to say today, actually. I know I've said, I know there's a lot of speaking today. A lot of speaking today. A lot of speaking for a silent teaching. A couple of things I want to say. First, is that there are things that are not said in this teaching that are meant to be obvious. For example, nowhere in this teaching does it advise that you should, and sorry if this sounds a bit silly, but nowhere in this teaching does it advise that you should regularly go to the toilet. You should regularly go to the toilet. It doesn't say that anywhere in these scriptures. You'll never see it, never see it, but you should. It's my recommendation. When you need to go to the toilet, go. Yeah. It doesn't say that in the teachings. Why? Because it's assumed. That's obvious. Yeah. Doesn't the teaching say be still? Doesn't the teaching say turn away from body, mind, world towards the self? Yes. Well, doesn't that mean I... No. If you need to go to the toilet, go to the toilet. Obviously, right? These things are presumed. So they're not said. You should likewise you should eat food. Typically, these teachings don't tell you to eat food. But you should. You should drink water. Right? Probably you won't you won't find many verses in the collected works, if any, telling you to drink water regularly. But you should. You see? There are things in here that are presumed to be obvious. And what are, what are those things? They are basic care of the body, mind, and world. You should look after your body, mind. To the extent that you, and you should generally speaking, look after other body, minds people around you, and you should be, be, take care of the world. Why am I saying this? The mind. The mind. Going to the toilet, drinking water, eating food, that's through the body, right? But what about the mind? If you are having mental stress, if you're having mental health problems, you should take steps to make the unhealthy mind healthy. If you have poor mental health, you should improve your mental health. If you've got poor physical health, you should improve your physical health, right? What does poor mental health mean? Poor mental health means unhappiness. Things that make you unhappy psychologically. If you are very unhappy or very anxious, psychologically a lot of the time that is called poor mental health if you're happy and content a lot most of the time a lot of time that is called mental health so if you have mental distress right you should seek to make yourself happy if you have if, if you need to go to the toilet and you don't go to the toilet, self-inquiry becomes very difficult. Yeah? Isn't it? If you're bursting for the loo, and you don't go, and you're trying to do self-inquiry, self-inquiry becomes very difficult. It's such an old point. That's on the level of the body. Same with the level of the mind. If you've got lots of mental health issues, self-inquiry becomes very difficult. Nowhere in here, in Bhagavan's writings, does it say that if you don't go to the toilet regularly, self-inquiry is difficult. It doesn't say it here, because it's presumed. A purist, an intellectual, 
Because read all of Bowen's teachers will say, no, there's no, you don't need to go to the toilet. You just do self-inquiry, they could say, couldn't they? Nowhere does Bhagavan tell us to go to the toilet. Therefore, Bhagavan has told us everything we need. We don't need to go to the toilet. We just need to do self-inquiry. No, you have to go to the toilet when you need to go. Mental health, you need to sort your mental health out. It will get in the way. Yeah. If you have a if you have an ailment, a physical ailment, let's say you've got a skin infection and you need some antibiotics, go to the doctor, get it diagnosed, take the medicine you need. You won't be able to do it self-inquiry very well if you've got this disease that's getting in the way. So I encourage you all to look after your mental health. I've seen some teachers recommend specific forms of therapy for your mental health. I have been helping people with mental health issues for many, many years. There is no one specific form of therapy that is the best. You have to find the one that works for you. And probably just as important as the type of therapy is the therapist. When it comes to talking therapies, especially. Find the therapist that works for you. Find the technique that works for you. Typically, it's the one you're drawn to and the one you'll do. It's like, what's the best form of exercise? In very basic terms, the best form of exercise is the one you do. And that tends to be the one you enjoy. Not the one you do for two weeks or for two months and then stop, but the one you will do regularly and safely for the rest of your life or for a long time. If you have a lot of tamasic energy in you, negative thoughts, negative feelings, we need to root those, outroot, uproot those. If you go straight to self-inquiry, if it works for you, that's great. If it works for you, that's great. If it cures you of your tamas, your negative energies, that's great. But if it doesn't, you need to get help. You may be able to help yourself. If it's mild, you can help yourself. If it's um, not so mild, if it's severe, you need to get outside help. Like anything. Yeah? You've hurt your finger a little bit. You can probably help yourself. Just don't bang your finger anymore. Keep it safe, out of harm's way for a few days. It'll be better. If you severely damaged your hand, you need to probably get outside help, see a doctor, go to a hospital, something like this. Same with your mental health. Look after your health. Look after your mental health. The, the analogy of going to, a to going to the toilet when you need to go is so straightforward and obvious, we never need to say it. It's almost ridiculous that, that I have to say it. I, I say it to make the point, to extrapolate from that example to mental health. If you've got severe mental health problems, I recommend you see a professional or specialist. If you've got mild ones, you might be able to sort it out yourself. In the middle, someone like me, Tom Das is very useful, for the bits in the middle, you know? You can say Tom Das specializes in a way in those people who have mental distress, but not the really severe end, but not the ones they can sort out themselves. And see me. Or find something that works for you. One teaching I want to give you, which I've been given on and off for a long, long, long time now. I phrase it in different ways. Sometimes I say, follow your bliss. Sometimes I say, follow your heart. The way I've been phrasing it recently is like this. Do, th do things that excite you.
as long as they are wholesome. Wholesome, remember my definition of wholesome? I try and define everything so you know what the teaching is saying and what it isn't saying. My definition of wholesome is something that is, relatively speaking, minimally damaging to the body and the mind and the world. Your body-mind, other body-minds, and the environment you're in. That is called wholesome. Something that doesn't damage it or minimally damages it. Why do I say why do I say minimally damages? Because for example, you might want to do something that is slightly damaging, but not very damaging. And that might be what you're moved to do. And I encourage you to do it. As long as it's not very damaging. For example, you might feel like I want to have a little bit of chocolate. And if it's a little, little bit of chocolate, as opposed to like kilos of chocolate, you know, <laughs> it's good. Go for it. If, it. if it makes you feel good, then do it. You know, you might want to, um, I don't know, go bungee jumping. I don't know why, but you might want to do that. If that's something you want to do, as long as you're being safe, do it. It may not be 100% safe. You might hurt yourself a little bit or something. Or you might engage in activity that you end up twisting your ankle in or something. So it's a little bit harmful, potentially. But it's fine. This is what you want to do. And I trust that all of you are able to discern the difference between something wholesome and unwholesome. I really encourage you to do things you enjoy in life. Little things. So many people hear this teaching of Bhagavan's and then they make their lives miserable. They isolate themselves. They stop talking to people. Why? Because Bhagavan says, turn away from body, mind, world to the self, which is what you have to do to realize the self. It's true. But you need good mental health. You need physical health. Don't damage yourself. You have to, you need some enjoyment in your life. If you're tamasic, you need enjoyment. Later on, when you're sattvic, you don't need those things anymore. You won't need those little bits of chocolate or the bungee jumping or whatever it is that you previously needed just to get you through or to pep you up or to motivate you. But when you're tamasic, when you have that negative energy in you, tamasic energy is that negative energy, depressive energy, dispiriting energy, lethargy. Or when you're feeling anxious, you know, you need to do things. You need to do things in your life that motivate, inspire you. And I encourage you to do that. You know? You want to join a um mountain biking club. Do it. That sounds amazing. You want to go to your local church and sing in a choir? Do it. That's fantastic to thing to do. You know, you want to join your local, um, I don't know, Democrat or Republican or local political party. You feel like you want to do it. Yeah. Go for it. Really. That's what you want to do. That's exciting to you. I mean, that might be the most depressing thing in the world to you, in which case, don't do it. And at every point in our life, every moment, we have a metaphorical fork in the road. We can go left or right. You know, Obviously, it might not just two choices. We might have three or four or five. We might go to road A, B, C, D. At any point, in your any moment, you have choices. Pick the one that excites you the most. Pick the one that interests you the most. It might only, it might only, it might only excite you a little bit more. Choice A might only excite you a tiny bit more than choice B. They might be, in the grand scheme of things, both pretty dull. Yeah? Pick the one that excites you more. One of them might excite you, but it doesn't seem to make any logical sense. For example... 
you might feel like you want to sit on the left seat instead of the right seat. You know, maybe you walk, maybe you've got a doctor's appointment. You go to the, you go to the waiting room and for some reason you feel like sitting on the seat on the left is more exciting for you than sitting on the seat on the right. They're both pretty dull, both pretty dull, but you feel like this one, for some reason, it feels a bit nicer to me. Makes no logical sense at all. No logical sense. Do that one. Trust your intuition. Do that one. You're learning to trust yourself. You're learning to trust your inner guidance. This is how I found Bhagavan. I trusted myself. I didn't read it in a book anywhere. A lot of my understanding of Bhagavan's teachings came later because when I read his teachings first, I dismissed them. I didn't understand them. My mind didn't like them and my mind didn't understand them. It's because I followed my own intuition within that I was taken within and I was able to understand these teachings more deeply. And a lot of these teachings I've come to appreciate after realization after liberation. You know, what I do, I find very, very easy. It just comes naturally to me. But so I, I say that just to preface what I'm about to say. It's a difficult position to be in. It's a difficult thing to do. It's not really difficult. It's easy for me, but it's a difficult thing to do in some ways because everybody's at different stages of the journey, right? So to give a satsang, to help people at all these different stages is not simple. And sometimes the te some teachings emphasize one aspect of the teaching at the risk of it de-emphasizing another. So I just want to make this bit clear, because I don't think I've done this in a while. I used to say it all the time. I don't think I've said it in a while, this, this emphatically. So I felt like I wanted to say it to you. Do things you enjoy in life. Wholesome things. Have integrity. Be wholesome. You know, I'm not talking about acting out your addictions. Although if you want to do that a little bit and, it's, and it feels good to you and it's wholesome, relatively speaking, then do it. If it's unwholesome, then try and avoid it. You need to resist those things. Or you need to get help if you can't do it yourself. From me or from a specialist, an expert. There's so many resources out there. There's so many resources. Google it. Look it up. Look up how to deal with these things. There's so many videos, so many things that can help you. Look after your physical health. Look after your mental health. The more you, but the, the, when you do what you enjoy doing, yeah, when you go towards that which excites you, you are following your intuition, your happiness. This is called bhakti. This is called bhakti. This is called devotion. This is called love. This is self love. When you do something that makes you happy, you are loving yourself. You're being good to yourself. I've noticed this often manifests in interactions with people. You could be with someone, right? You can be with someone and they're chattering away. And you're thinking to yourself, because you have a belief in your head, that I am I want to be a good person and therefore I should listen to them. I should listen to this person I'm talking to because that's what a good person does, right? You listen to people. That's what everyone says. If you're a good person, you listen. But your heart might be saying to you, this is dull, this is boring, I don't want to be here. Now, you have to do this skillfully, right? And you cannot blame me. I don't want to not take any responsibility. But my advice is, don't do things if you don't enjoy it. If you're 
then you end up sacrificing yourself for others. It's not good for you, and it's not good for them. You start enabling them, you start taking away your own power. It's not good for you. It's not good for your self-esteem. It's not good for your own power. It's not good for your own intuition. You open yourself up to be used and bullied. When you start following what you want to do, it's like this person, you're in a conversation with someone, they're boring you. And you skillfully, skillful as you're able to, maybe it's not very skillful. I mean, I'm often very unskillful with these things. I probably need to get better. But as skillful as you're able to, you break away from that conversation. You know? And sometimes it's body, but sometimes it's body language. Sometimes it's just like, you know, not looking at them when they're talking to you, you know, because you don't want to. You know? In the same way, the waiting remote analogy, you might choose one chair over another. You might want to look at something else while they're talking to you, because that's more interesting. Why not? So this is one way it can manifest. Do things that excite you every moment. Choose the things that's more exciting. This is when you start doing this you start developing your intuition you start feeling happier in every moment as you feel happier in every moment your addictions fall away bliss and love comes into your heart this is bhakti you become closer to the self closer to bhagavan and your self inquiry starts working way better just like when you go to the toilet your self inquiry goes way better than if you tried not to I know it sounds completely different, but it's the same thing. Yeah, why do you go to the toilet? You're following your bliss, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. What if you had a conceptual ideology that good people don't go to the toilet? You know, and you're trying to trying to hold it in oh my gosh you know i want to be a good person but i really want to pee you know i say pee you know you're in a meditation thing if you need to pee get up and pee you don't need to hold it in the same way you're talking to someone you don't want to talk to them don't talk to them they'll live People will learn to um, be more self-reliant and they'll learn to value you more the more you value yourself. And you'll find that you there are people you want to listen to and there are people you want to engage with and you'll be genuinely engaging. You won't be fake engaging. You'll be genuinely engaging. You'll be yourself. Which is much more important than, in quotes, being good. Be yourself. Be wholesome. Be yourself. Even on the body, mind, world level. I hope you can see how this teaching all fits together. Maybe it seems contradictory to that you have to turn within, away from the body, mind, world to realize the self. And yet I'm saying... If you feel like going into the world, go into the world. You'll see how this all fits together. Because when you go into the world and do what you enjoy, you become happier. You become more sattvic. The tamas and rajas get rooted out of you and you become more peaceful. And then you are inclined more to self-inquiry. Just like when you go to the toilet, you become more sattvic. The agitation and distress of needing to go disappears and then you're able to do self-inquiry more. It's the same thing. It's just on the physical level as opposed to the mental, emotional level. Okay. I don't think I've ever given the teaching in this way before, exactly. But here, there we go. It's new every time, isn't it?
don't become miserable don't shut yourself away unless that excites you when you follow your bliss you get to a point where that will excite you it's just so exciting just to be by yourself with Bhagavan in your heart but until then do other things this is a natural path natural path I think that sometimes gets missed in some of the ways sometimes I can, the way I communicate it I said it's not easy to give all these different aspects of the teaching at once and it's very easy but it's if you see what I mean